welcome to the Radio Graphics Podcast. I'm Wendy Gibbs. This week, we're so fortunate to have some very special guests with us, Drs. Krishna Juluru and Ken Wang, the Associate and Assistant Editors for Informatics. Radio Graphics has a fantastic collection of informatics articles that provides us with introductory and slightly more advanced information on this vital area of radiology practice and training. In addition to summarizing several important recent articles, Dr. Juluru is going to tell us a bit more about the content and goals of the informatics section. Thank you, Wendy. I'm Krishna Juluru, the new Associate Editor for Informatics. I'm here today with Ken Wang, the new Assistant Editor for Informatics. We are delighted to be joining the Radiographics podcast community. Informatics covers a broad range of topics. The goal of the informatics section in Radiographics is to provide our readership of radiologists, scientists, policy leaders, and thought leaders the information necessary to understand and engage with trends in radiology informatics specifically and healthcare informatics more broadly. Categories of articles in our section include visualization, 3D printing, augmented reality, and virtual reality, user interfaces and user experience, standards, coding, and ontologies, security, informatics tools that support research, reporting, report analysis, and follow-up, artificial intelligence, image segmentation and processing, operations and practice improvement, and presentation and teaching. The first article we will be covering today is Bag of Words Technique in Natural Language Processing, a primer for radiologists. I am one of the authors, and the article falls under the category of reporting, report analysis, and follow-up. Natural Language Processing, or NLP, is a methodology designed to extract concepts and meaning from human-generated, unstructured, free-form text, such as the radiology report. An application of NLP that may be most familiar to us all is the Google search. Various forms of the same question typed into Google usually lead to the same set of results. This happens because the Google algorithms use NLP to determine the essence of the questions being asked. NLP has a variety of applications in healthcare. This article provides an introduction to a technique in NLP known as bag of words and is ideally suited for those wishing to understand the basic concepts in preparation for working with a data scientist to build a particular solution. The idea of the technique is that documents can be simplified by looking at their individual words, independent of the order of those words and their association with one another. We attempt to define the meaning of documents by taking all the individual words and placing them into a figurative bag, hence the name of the method. In this way, terms such as pancreatic cancer and cancer of the pancreas create very similar bags of words and therefore have the same meaning. The article walks through a particular example of how one might use this technique to prepare a decision support tool that helps to predict the appropriate radiological exam to order from the history provided by a referring physician. Let's take a look at some of the histories. History number one. Pancreatic cancer with metastasis, jaundice with transaminitis, assess for obstructive process. History number two, pancreatitis, breast cancer, no output from enteric tube, assess tube. History number three, metastatic pancreatic cancer, acute renal failure, evaluate for hydronephrosis or obstructive uropathy. Using these statements and others, the article walks through several pre-processing steps. The first is tokenization, the process of breaking up the sentences into individual words and placing them into our figurative bag. The next is removal of stop words, which are words that occur with the highest frequency in speech and writing and typically do not carry any special meaning, such as the and is. These words have been previously defined in libraries such as the Natural Language Toolkit, making it easy to identify them and remove them quickly. But caution! These libraries include words such as no, not, and if, which when removed could change the meaning of the statement entirely. The next step in text preparation is token normalization, the process of reducing words to a root form so that the variations of words are recognized as a single entity. 
One variety is stemming, which reduces shades of meaning such as plurality and tense. The Natural Language Toolkit has a stemming algorithm that can be easily applied to documents. The words obstructive and obstruction are stemmed to the word obstruct without loss of meaning. However, the article provides examples of other kinds of words that lose meaning when stemmed, alerting the reader to beware. A dictionary is all the unique words in all the different clinical statements. After tokenization, stemming, and token normalization, the words in each clinical statement are placed into separate virtual bags for analysis. The article then describes how the words in the individual bags can be valued. The simplest approach is term presence. For each term in the master dictionary, term presence simply determines the presence of a word in an individual bag as true or false. The next approach is term count, which is, as the name implies, counts the number of times a word appears in a bag. Unlike term presence, this method places a higher value on words that appear more frequently. The next approach is term frequency, or TF, defined as the ratio of the number of times a word appears in a bag to the number of words in the bag. Like term count, term frequency places a higher value on words that appear more often, but decreases the value in proportion to the overall number of words in the bag. And the last approach is inverse document frequency, or IDF. This method helps to value a word based on the number of times that word appears in all the documents. For example, if the word cancer appears in all the histories provided by the referring physicians, then that word will probably not help identify the appropriate exam to order. IDF reduces the value of words with the increasing number of times those words appear in all the documents being analyzed. The choice of techniques in processing the documents and valuing the individual words is a decision of the team performing the natural language processing. Depending on the application and desired outcome, combinations of these techniques may be applied. In summary, by walking through a particular example of clinical statements provided by referring physicians, this article explains the bag of words technique in natural language processing. It explains the reasons for using this technique, along with some of its limitations. Additionally, the article includes a hands-on exercise available online through a link provided. The article should be a good introduction to someone preparing to work with a data scientist on a variety of projects involving natural language processing. Thanks, Krishna. I'm Ken Wang, and I'm going to take the next few minutes to summarize another article from the September-October issue. In their paper, Deep Learning, an Update for Radiologists, Cheng et al. provide a comprehensive update on convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, for image analysis applications in radiology. I enjoyed this article, and this overview should be useful both for researchers as a summary of current techniques, as well as for clinical radiologists looking to better understand the landscape of deep learning technologies for medical image analysis. Some readers might find it useful to refer also to an earlier introductory article by Chartrand et al., Radiographics 2017, and or to focus on selected portions of the current article. It's also important to note what this article is not about. It's not about deep learning for image reconstruction, but rather focuses on images after they have been created. It's also not about deep learning for natural language processing. There are other recent radiographics articles about these other topics. However, within the scope of deep learning for medical image analysis, this article by Cheng and co-authors provides an important summary of the field, giving a framework for understanding the types of problems which can be addressed, an overview of current technical approaches, and a useful discussion of how to evaluate and understand results produced by CNNs. One of the fundamental teaching points of the article is that medical image analysis problems can be divided into four key categories. First, image classification, which is the global labeling of an image with a descriptor or diagnosis. So for example, classifying a chest radiograph as showing pneumonia, or classifying an abdominal ultrasound image as showing cholecystitis, or classifying an MR image as being T2 weighted, 
would all be examples of image classification. Second, object detection, which is the identification and localization of target objects within an image, including the position and size of the objects. Examples here would include detection of lung nodules with a rectangular box or a bounding box circumscribed on each nodule, or the detection of mediastinal lymph nodes with a bounding box on each node, or detection of liver metastases as shown in figure one of the paper. The third type of problem is semantic segmentation, which is the precise identification of a target structure on a pixel by pixel basis. That pixel by pixel result is often referred to as a mask, where the mask indicates that a given pixel is either included or excluded from the result. So for example, semantic segmentation of the lungs would identify all pixels that are part of the lungs and exclude pixels that are outside the lungs. The fourth type of problem is instance segmentation, which refers to pixel by pixel identification of potentially multiple target objects. This represents a combination of object detection and semantic segmentation. For example, with lung nodules, the goal with instance segmentation is to identify each nodule individually and to produce a pixel by pixel mask for each such nodule. The authors proceed to discuss issues related to data preparation for deep learning. For clinical radiologists, the discussion of data is useful to define the need for a sufficient quantity of data to produce a generalizable result. The need for labels on training data is also discussed where labels are the data annotations corresponding to the desired outputs. These labels are used together with the images to train the network. If the network is to be used for a classification task, then a label might be a tag on a radiographic image indicating pneumonia. If the network is for an object detection task, then a label might be a bounding box circumscribing a lung nodule. And if the network is for a segmentation task, then a label might be a pixel mask identifying the lungs. As the authors state, creating labels for detection and segmentation tasks is more complicated and time consuming compared to labels for classification tasks. The paper then gives detailed information about convolutional neural network architectures as well as methods for network training and validation. For deep learning practitioners, this portion of the paper provides useful context on recent trends in network architectures and also provides details on specific architectures used for the different categories of image analysis problems. Among the highlights in this portion of the paper are the discussion of classification networks, figure 10, image upsampling techniques, that is, unpooling and transpose convolution, as shown in figure 13, the UNET architecture for segmentation applications, figure 14, and the description of generative adversarial networks, or GANs, figure 16. Strategies for training and validating networks are also discussed with a goal of optimizing convergence, performance, and robustness. The authors then give a summary of performance measures and visualization techniques which may be applied to deep learning results. For detection and segmentation results, a nice graphical representation of two closely related metrics, the intersection over union or IOU score and the DICE score is given in figure 17. Finally, visualization methods for classification networks are discussed. These are an important way to understand how a classifier works and which parts of an image it relies on to produce a result. See figure 18. Such insight can increase user confidence or can elucidate unintended contributions to a classification result. Overall, this paper provides a comprehensive update on the state of the art with regard to convolutional neural networks for medical image analysis applications, which should have value for both clinicians and researchers. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Drs. Jularu and Wang, for presenting that important information in a way that we can all understand it. We look forward to hearing from you more in the new year. That's it for this week's podcast. Come see us at the Radiographics booth at RSNA. Drs. Frederick and I will be there Tuesday morning, and come see us at the Discovery Theater on Tuesday afternoon. And we'll be back in two weeks with more summaries. Mm -hmm.